before you even get to make another choice. I just want to say one more thing, mate. The pictures you choose to show of these people, well, that's how the public is going to perceive them, and that's going to affect their lives. So, like with the adverts, choose carefully. No, and we're off. Good luck, mate. If I get to I'll be back in the next break. You know, I'm coming, darling. Janet says there's gets really hot. Tonight. Is this Janet who yeah. thinks dogs have their own speak. secret language? Yeah, the one that mistrusts the moon. Action. Ten seconds, everybody. Not the best source of consumer advice, Don't blame that. me when it explodes. Going in five, four, that, three. It's time to go over to Jeremy Donaldson for tonight's National Good Night. evening, I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main headlines tonight. Destination unknown. At the end of Advance's first full week in office, we ask exactly who's leading this chart. Tonight, I'll be discussing what the new future might hold with a leading economist and radical free thinker. With the country's wealth creators in a state of panic and unfavorable rumblings already heard from overseas, I'll be asking my guests whether Advance can deliver on even a fraction of their manifesto promises. Out with the old, Remington Fist have appointed Sophia Remington as their new CEO. The following photo, taken from our archive, gives us a sense of this influential young firebrand who, at the tender age of 23, becomes the youngest female CEO in history. Sophia Remington has always impressed. She was top of her class at university and graduated with the highest honors, immediately being asked back to lecture. The markets have responded favorably to Sophia's appointment, with stocks rising 30 points in light of the announcement. In her first press conference this afternoon, Sophia announced a children's toy named Mr. Snugglehawks. Sophia promises it'll be all the rage this Christmas, but concerns have been raised about the product's safety. Making a splash. Intrepid scientist Dr. David Wong and marine biologist Ingrid Swarsborg and Horgensford have today set off to explore Dante's taint. The recently discovered cave system was previously thought unreachable, but thanks to a new breakthrough in underwater flower technology, the pair hope to successfully reach the imposing central cavern and the undiscovered plant species it contains. Many were surprised that the two scientists who shared a fractious rivalry for many years decided to undertake this expedition in each other's company. However, the two have released a joint statement in which they opine geniuses don't have to like each other to achieve remarkable results. Playing the field, rumors about the sporting legend Johnny Hamsleeves is not leaving Bush, one of the capital's hottest clubs. The footballer was caught while out celebrating being named Sports Personality of the Year last week, as reported by this very program. And judging from the angle and velocity of that spray, it looks like Johnny may have been celebrating a little bit too much. I certainly wouldn't want to be his dry cleaner. And grievous bodily charm. With advance promising a radical new position on crime, how afraid should we actually be? I'll be going live around the country to talk with people who've seen the criminal justice system from every perspective. With more and more powers passing to the police, and less and less oversight, are we using an advanced shaped sledgehammer to crack a nut? All that, a mega move for the group of young actors already experiencing the positive side of the new Assets and Wealth Act firsthand. They'll be talking and performing later. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. government's swift enactment of the Assets and Wealth Act, we're talking about Advance's first week in office and what the new future holds. Joining me are Katie Brightman, a leading economist, and Alan James, author of Alan James is Right, The Free Man's Guide to Waking Up. Alan, the government certainly haven't dragged their heels on delivering some of the legislation they promised, but what does the Wealth Act mean for us? Nothing, Jeremy. We're still vassal slaves, we're just in prettier cages. A confident dismissal there. Katie Brightman, do you agree? I'm afraid I don't, no. I think that Vance have realised that the current economic system of unlimited, unending growth is untenable, so they're changing things up. There I agree with you. They're moving to the next steps in the grand plan. Grand plan, Alan? It's all in my book. Alan James is right, Jeremy. We're to become the great herd. 
Ignorant, Which sterile, and short-lived. That's what they want. Or perhaps Advance have just realized that if we carry on the way we are, we will destroy ourselves and this planet in a mad orgy of consumption, if you'll excuse the colorful metaphor. Yes. Orgy is the right word. Only it'll be the overlords having an orgy on our poor broken backs. It's all in my book. Alan James is shamelessly self-promoting. Kate, how do you think the rest of the world will respond to this new approach? I think they're watching carefully. Advance are the most disruptive threat that the world powers have faced since the last great war. Yes, Katie's right. War is inevitable. Thank you, but that isn't... And this will not be a war like we've ever seen before. We're talking millions of deaths. We're talking high-tech weapons that can level entire cities. We're talking... Out of the wrong orifices? Mock me all you like, Jeremy. But when they murder your parents and they poison your food and they take you away to their camps for hypno-brainwashing, we'll be laughing then. That might be a great way to sell books, Alan, but you know full well that isn't going to happen in a democracy. Democracy is dead. Yes, advance are radical, and change is always frightening, but the truth is that the Wealth and Assets Act has made more than 90% of the population wealthier and is on target to produce a permanent end to poverty. Bollocks! What this young lady doesn't understand, Jeremy, is that these are the same people. Maybe they've rebranded, but it's all a little circus act to keep us from seeing the tyrant behind the curtain. That's where you're wrong, Alan. For a start, they've mobilised the youth vote like we've never seen before. You say mobilise, I call it grooming. The grooming of an entire generation to walk happily into eternal bondage. They're like psychic paedophiles. But based on the facts, Katie, what are your predictions? The Assets and Wealth Act is only the first step. Advance now have a historic budgetary surplus, and as well as properly funding our public services, they're already, un they're already funneling unprecedented amounts into scientific research and the arts. Or, as I call them in my book, Franken Science and Opie Arts. Like opiates, see? Can we get back to the issue at hand, please, Alan? This is the issue. It's all coming from the water, the chemicals. They're pumping it full of belief juice. Don't get me wrong. I want to see these changes, but only if they're sustainable. If Advance lose their power after spending half of our GDP on dismantling infrastructure, that could be catastrophic. The catastrophe is that they're succeeding. They've got us sat here talking about their puppet show. All right, we're running out of time. Quickly, Alan, um, what does the future look like to you, Alan? A bleak space where we've all been figuratively sodomized into submission. No, of course. Katie? We might be on the eve of a brave new world. God knows we need some change, but we need to be cautious. Let's walk forwards with our eyes open. Two very different visions of the future there. Alan James, Katie Brightman, thank you for joining me. When we come back, I'll be investigating law and order before Meghan meets some beneficiaries of the Assets and Wealth Act. That's all coming up tonight on the National Nightly News. One minute back. One you know, I think they might do some. I hope so too, Jeremy. How much are you being paid by them? Oh, shut the fuck up. I've never heard so much shit in my life. Well, we'll see who's full of shit, won't we? Alan, I can explain it to you, but unfortunately. <laughs> Ten seconds, everybody. Five, four, three. Welcome back. In our second segment, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the state of law and order in our country. Advance have already tasked what they are calling a solutions team to move this serious social problem to the top of the list. Tonight. day of their lives. First day up, of we have Gregory lives. Judge, First a lawyer who sees the Gregory problems Judge. close up. A lawyer who sees the problems close up. Can you hear me, Gregory? Can you yes, hear me, Yes, I've got you, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. Yes, I've got What's you, What's it like on the front line of the hard face? What's it like on the front line of the hard face? Well, as you can imagine, Jeremy, well, we are massively imagine, understaffed Jeremy, in this we country. We are massively understaffed uh, we're working this every hour we can just to try and cope with the caseloads on our desks. Which must affect the quality of support you can offer. Well, we can barely keep up with the market, Jeremy. There's simply enough being done at a systemic level to relieve the problem. Greg. We need more support from ministers. We... 
you doing? <laughs> well, we need change at a structural level, I'm Jeremy. leaving, Greg. Not a good time, darling. It never is, is it? I'll be at my mother's. No, just hang on. Just hang on. The, the problem isn't a local one, Jeremy. It's... What the heck? Oh. I hear the sound of other room. I don't get it. Welcome back. In our second segment, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the state of law and order in our country. Advance have already tasked what they are calling a solutions team to move this serious social problem to the top of the list. Tonight, we go behind the headlights to make the people who live with the criminal justice system every day of their lives. First up, we have Gregory Judge, a lawyer who sees the problems close up on the front line. Can you hear me, Gregory? Can yes, you know? I've got you, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. Yes, What's it like on the front line of the hard face of the cold like hand of justice? Of well, as you can imagine, Jeremy, well, we are massively understaffed in this country. Uh, we're working every hour we can just to try and cope with the caseloads on our desks. Which must affect the quality of support, you cannot. Well, we can barely keep up with demand, Jeremy. Uh, there simply isn't enough being done at a systemic level to relieve the problem. We need more support from ministers. <laughs> well, we need change at a structural level. I'm Jeremy. leaving, Greg. Have a good time, darling. It never is, is it? Time, darling. I'll be at my mother's. It never is, is it? Just hang I'll be at my mother's. On. Just hang on. The, the problem isn't a local one. Oh, the, Jeremy, the problem isn't a local one. Local one. Just, Jeremy, it's nationwide. Just, just Jeremy, give me five oh, minutes. Have you to Jeremy Thompson. No. Oh, have you mentioned your affairs? Well, uh, the affairs well, of the, the justice affairs department that we should be the concerned, justice about. Department that we should Hello, be concerned about. Hello, Mrs. Judge. Hello, Mrs. Donaldson. We need, Hello, uh, Mrs. Judge. We need, we need uh, legislation to we relieve need the legislation on our public sorry to relieve to the pressure on our public so sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Donaldson. Can I have a moment to yes. tell my husband I'm leaving? Yes. Quite yes. like the picture of a burden legal sector. Quite like the picture of a burden legal sector there. Joining us, Gregory Judge. Thank you. Next, I'm joined by Police Chief Constable. Next, Bob I'm joined Peel. by Police Chief Constable. Different perspective. Different perspective. Do you think there's a problem with the system, Bob? Do you think there's a problem with the system, Bob? I'm sure we all do, Jeremy. I'm sure. I'm sure we all do, Jeremy. I'm sure we all long for a return to the day. Jeremy, I'm I'm sure we all long for a return to the day. Safely walking in through windows and generally enjoying a neighbours without the risk of being terrorised by some thug with a knife or kosh. So you feel the streets simply aren't safe anymore? Where have we gone wrong, Bob? Well, that's not a simple question, Jeremy, but I think it all comes down to moral decay. We've diluted our culture and lost touch with what it means to be a citizen of this once great country. Also, as the vicar noted in Sunday's sermon, we probably shouldn't have banned hanging. And to what do you attribute this moral decay? Foreigners, gays and gypsies, mainly. It's all in the Bible. Look, Leviticus clearly states that... Oh, bugger, hang on a moment. Jeremy, a bloody gimps escaped. <laughs> Delia? Delia, could you give me a little help, please, dear? Uh, as I was saying, Jesus didn't like immigrants much, did he? And just to be clear, you think it's the immigrants who are responsible for the moral oh, yes. decay? Absolutely, Jeremy. Oh, back in your box, Clive. Back in your box. Delia, I really could use a little help with this. I'm sorry, darling. I was spaying the badgers. Yes, yes. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Clive, could you put him back oh. in the box? Oh, Clive, you know it's Wednesday. Come on, look, come in your gifts, please. And you know who's responsible for you to make a change, Bob? Well, it is certainly not the responsibility of the decent, good, white people of this. The oh, hold on just a moment. Oh, Clive, this is something I want to do. Naughty, 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 boy. Right. 
Clive, I am not having this again. As I was saying, Jeremy, moral decay. Crime is the responsibility of the criminal, no one else. Look, everyone has a sob story, but we don't all end up as barbarians, do we? Look, when our daughter Alice comes home with an A minus, does she go on a killing spree? No, she takes three of her pills and hides under the stairs like a normal child. Thank you, Bob. Bob Bill there, really locking down the police's position on morality for us. And finally tonight. <laughs> After serving three years for aggravated assault, burglary, and menacing a swamp. He's agreed to talk to us today, which is also, I believe, his birthday. Many happy returns, Tony. Cheers, Jez. Call me Titwank, Tony. Everybody else does. No, I'm not going to be doing that. Can you tell us what it's like in prison, Tony? Titwank, Tony. Hey! Prison's a mixed bag. Structure's quite nice, but... It's a constant battle against institutionalization, as you can imagine. And obviously, titwanks are quite hard to come by. I'm picking up that you're not alone there, Tony. Titwank, Tony. <laughs> yeah, sorry, my friends are throwing me a surprise party. Good bunch of lads. OK, well, we'll try that you get back to that party as soon as possible. First, let me ask you this. Do you feel that your time spent in prison helped to rehabilitate you in any way, Tony? Titwank, Tony. <laughs> I don't think it's as easy as that, Jez. Yeah, I think asking that is an oversimplification. It sounds like it's getting quite busy there, Tony, but uh, let's try and soldier on. Since leaving custody, have you been able to find a new... Yeah, all the boys are here. It's Big Chris, oi, oi. Little Chris, oi, oi. and Vampire Chris. <laughs> this one. one sec, love. Tip one time on the loose. Rehabilitation's difficult with the current system, Jez. It's just not set up for it, you know? It's inherently unjust. Open. So, do you feel tempted to... I'm sorry, who's this now? Open. You are joking. Chrissy Free Bollocks only got Mr. Fancy, oh? It worked. It worked. It worked. It see, hey, I've been it seems like we've caught you at a bad time. <laughs> caught you at a bad time. Oh, I can't really hear you, mate. It's getting a bit busy here. Oh, I can't really hear you, mate. It's getting a bit busy here. Yes, we uh, seem to be losing yes, a signal here, Tony. Seem to be losing a signal here, Tony. Well, we're just trying to get that signal back. Well, we're just trying to get that signal back. Tony? Tony, I mean, you're looking at for two seconds. It was a serious order. order. Complex issues after the break, order. Megan will be live after the break. Lucky young Megan will be live with some lucky young thespians. We'll be back. Why go this way? Hey, I ain't got long and I'm quite drunk. It's been a great night. In this next section, there's a bit of music. If you edit in time with the music, you can see the result on the vision mixer, and the public will love that. Don't worry if you don't know, you won't get punished for all or nothing. Just try and stay in the groove. Also, one last tip when the music starts, turn down the broadcast volume. Right, enjoy the music, Ben. God, I love music. God, I'm so pissed. I think I'm Okay. Of in the survey said they lost their visible slates. And seven out of ten dentists would recommend it. Judo Kashan. Because we said so. Five, four, three. Welcome to Black. I'm Megan Wolf. And on tonight's Black culture Megan spot, Wolf. I'll be chatting with one of the culture first spot, I'll be chatting with one of the first and well a, team of and a team of inspiring young people. A team of inspiring young people who today received a grant from advance. Who today received a grant from advance. Friendship on a tour of local secondary schools. Friendship on a tour of local secondary schools. Well, let's start with you two, Harriet and Charlotte. Well, let's start with you two, Harriet and Charlotte Wynne Stanley Dash Hamilton. We are Megan. We are Megan. And I believe you two sisters. Is that right? And I believe you 
Charlotte's sister. Charlotte's my older. I'm the older, more popular, one. The older, more popular okay. one. I'm the older, more popular <laughs> one. Harriet and Trey were really the ones. Who Harriet came up and Trey were idea. really the ones who came up with the whole idea. Harry and I were shooting the breeze in the cafeteria. Harry and I were shooting the breeze in the cafeteria. And I said, Hey, so I went to look for a drama teacher. But she's been laid off. But she's been laid off. Fortunately, I directed a pantomime when I was at university. I directed a pantomime when I was at university. So I knew the ropes as it were. Retreated from his bin, his secretary retreated from his bin. How did you react? How did you react? But then Harriet and Trey rescued it. And Harriet and Trey rescued it. The bottom page. And the next thing you know, we're on tour. Next thing you know, we're on tour. Wow. Well, I think now we're voting. Do you know what? It's funny because Angela and I don't usually vote. It's funny because Angela and I don't usually vote. I'm a mathematician. She's a mathematician. But we did used to watch that. We did used to watch that. Peter Clements. And DIY so show thought, back in the day. Why not? And so let's have a go with this old democracy thing. Okay. Let's have a go with this old democracy thing. Okay. Fucking billion. Let's have a look. Billion. So let's have a look, so, so, let's have a look hey. at a short friendship of hey. Dear diary, I'm not sure I can take another day at this school. I'm not sure I can take another day at this another school. Another day of tears. tears. Another day of tears. Another day of fears. fears. Another day of fears. But still fears. I walk the corridors alone. But still I walk the corridors alone. alone. Dreading what might be around alone. every corner. Dreading what might be around What's every around corner. What's around the corner? What's, What's around, the around the corner? corner? What's around the corner? What's around the corner? What's around the corner? Oh, hi, Gary. Oh, heavens Hi, no! Gary. It's Gary the Fist! Oh, heavens no! Gary, Gary, the, Gary fist. the Fist! Going somewhere, little first year. Going somewhere, Great. little first year. I've been looking for some pork. Great, Tim to bully. I've been looking for some pork. But Tim to bully. This all morning. Feel better about my but violent this make father. Feel better about my violent father. Excuse me. I'm late for maths. Excuse me. My favourite subject. I'm late for maths. Is my so favourite subject. And so important. Uh, maths is for losers. What? Matt is for losers. My own stuff. Matt, just keep going for fuck's sake. Just keep going for fuck's sake. Matt is for losers. Now, give me your lunch money. Now, give me your lunch money. Double lunch for me today, but double lunch for me today. Why am I only truly happy when I eat it? Why am I only truly happy when I eat it? Not today, Gary the Fist. Not today, Gary What do you mean, not today? Who are you? What do you mean, not today? My own Who are you? Brilliant, keep going. My own free coat. Brilliant, keep going. Who are you to stand up to me? Who are you to stand up to me? Oh, I'm just Gary. a sad little girl with two gay dads who's all alone. That's where you're wrong, Gary the Fist. These are my two new friends. Vanessa is captain of the netball team. Yeah. Blake owns a motorbike. Yeah. But, but, I can't fight all three of you. And I don't have any friends of my own. i 
take a look at me. Take a little look at my face. I could be you. She could be you. And you could be me. Or you could be me. Life can be cheeky. choice to remain So I stop now Make a different choice shouldn't exist, but that's just prejudice, and I'd do better if you knew the way that I became Gary the Fist. I grew up on a council estate, the park was hip, but the flats weren't great, my dad used to come home drunk and late, and it hit my mum at the dinner, he had to wait. Of course, my dinner was not ready. Where's my dinner, <laughs> Don't make me ask you again. Eating women is wrong. I guess life's pretty hard on a council estate. 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 time for tonight on the National Nightly News. Join us tomorrow night for all the headlines from across the country. My name's Jeremy Dalton. Have a peaceful night. And we're out. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> what the dreadful fuck was that? I believe that was art. I believe I've got a 14th in clock, but if it's so... I have a similar belief about an adequate paycheck. Oh, someone please get these twats out of my studio. What the heck? Where he can't keep? <laughs> Total fans, three hundred feet. Oh man! I will not leave it. A good video editor. stuff how to blip automatic oh man upgrades
Jeremy Dolan. Our main story is tonight. Tonight. Day 15, a late night. To arrive home after another long shift to find a note waiting for you on the countertop. You recognize Sam's curious scroll. Chris has been evicted for not paying rent. We're going to pick up Chris stuff from the street. Don't wait up. Underline twice. So this is your fault now, is it? Select the press play on the cheap or film we were going to watch together. It used to absolutely terrify you as a kid, but always makes the two of you laugh. It's not the same without Sam, but you still chuckle to yourself occasionally. Just as you get into the good bit, the part where Candy decides to investigate alone, 14 year old son interrupts. He wants to go to a friend's house. He looks at you in way on a child can. Leading, but someone defiant. To let him go and lock his promise to be home by 11. No. Alice voice gets louder and louder as he sees you are not going to change your mind. You pretend it is for my own good, but really you just want to be left alone. Fucking hate you. He has to eat this. He knows he's going too far, but in his rage, he can bring himself back down before you can open your mouth. Storms upstairs and slams the, his door. Okay. In the morning, you knock on your son, but there is no reply. Going in, you see his bed empty and the window is wide open. When Charlie comes home that night, you front him on the for dinner. He has to accept that there are consequences to his actions. Okay. A tight Christmas. You can't help but crack a smile. As you look around the table, the snow has settled on the grass outside, the kids are pulling a cracker while your elderly mother tries to keep her, her eyes open. You did always have a soft spot for Christmas. Sitting at the head of the table now, your dad's place. It's been a tense afternoon, everyone can feel it. It is the first time you've been curious since you refused to part with your passport. I mean, it's a big change for Sam, the two siblings used to be inseparable. Christmas is usually such a nice time of year. Letter of cutlery is all that can be heard as Chris stares pointedly at you. Are you having a nice Christmas, Grandma? Your mother stares back at you, confused. She comes back to herself to start with recognition. Yes, thank you, Alex. It's lovely. She murmurs. It's been happening more and more lately. Butter cutlery is all that can be heard as Chris starts pointing to you make the toast to stay silent. Silent. Please knock back a fourth glass of wine a little too violently. See Sam, can even look me in the eye after what happens. Your daughter look up and you. What do you mean? What happened? You brace yourself. Sam tries to interject. Let's not go into it now. But Chris continues forcefully. No, no, no. I think. She should hurry it. Well, Susie, Alex here. Thank you, Chris. That is enough. Stop talking right now. Chris turns away from you, taking some frustration out on a cheap cut of roast chicken. Go to Susie, sees the opportunity to corner you. You know how you love me. You chuckle. It sounds familiar. I'm not going to like this, I am. You joke. Susie rolls her eyes. You know me and my friends are planning on going traveling this year. Susie begins in a, innocently. Well, I was hoping you'd help me with the money. She's interrupted by Chris, who makes uh, the decisive snort. I wouldn't hold your bread, Susie. Not known for your generosity. Are you, Alex? Please do us all of you and shut your mouth. Well, see so many parts of the world and learn so much about other cultures. Susie gushes. You sigh and lower your voice. No, money is really tight now. Grandma's staying here. We just don't have that kind of money, Suze. But please, her is parents are helping her. Sam interrupts. Sorry, we are you going to salt me on this or we are just going to just carry on pretending I don't exist? You feel your cheeks flush red and turn away so Chris can't see. No. We haven't been the most tension lately, but this rebuke still seems harsh. Sam exhales and seems to brighten. 
luckily for someone, I agree. It's a great opportunity. I'm sure we can find the money somewhere. Sam isn't looking at you. Charlie excuse himself awkwardly as you start to clear the plates inside. You had an nice birthday, Pat. Your mother chimes in fearfully. Merry fucking Christmas. <laughs> Welcome, Windfall. You're leafing through the pile of accumulated post. Each new build pulls on your gut like a lead weight until a flash of blue makes you pause. Organizing the teal advanced logo on the envelope to tear it up. Dear Mr. Resident, thank you for sending us your passport for approval. Now confirm they received the validation for the new assistant belt redemption shape. Hopefully this will make it the last one of our arguments with Sam for it. Such is our right large and close check which we hope you will see a symbol not only for our gratitude to you but of our unwavering commitment to creating a society free of inequality. Trooping of your fresh speed induced paper cut is the only reason you can believe you are awake. Check the sizable on one at that, this was right. Men's really are redistributing wealth. We will continue to strive for the betterment for this nation and it will forward together. Julius Ellisby, Peter Clement. The weight of your financial burdens lessens slightly. It is a police. A long weekend. Let's go. Why does the zip on this damn case never close? It's your anniversary. Every year you and Sam go away for the weekend, usually camping. You're not made of money. We've been looking forward to it for age, finally getting some time alone together where you can forget about the noise of life. No kids, no work, just a bit of romance and some peace and quiet. This finally gives up the battle and you drag the bulging suitcase down to the stairs. The answering machine is blinking on the hall table. The only guy like this is Mr. Bozeman, kindly inform you that you will be required to work this weekend. Your her sings. Some information has come to light concerning the rising tension between our nation and Fergin. Hours and the national nightly news team will be working around the clock to ensure we break the story first. Needless to say, we'll expect your attendance tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. sharp. Have a pleasant evening, Alex. Shops turn to annoyance and then fury. What are you going to tell Sam? Sam comes downstairs, brimming with the time, kissing you. They grab the car keys from the dish and start to load your bags into the back. Ignore the message. Oh man, what to do? I will lose the job. Message deleted. What was that? Sam's voice from behind. Not important. Grabbing Sam around the waist. Might as well enjoy your time off. You are going to pay for it on Monday. An unwelcome return. Man, you get work Monday morning, you get some sore look from your exhausted colleagues. An old seat's waiting for you. Very disappointed, Winston. What? Is it, is it worth it? They. 98. Commission sleep. Your son, Charlie, always at your elbow uh, as you read. Do you find yourself striving to achieve? You're an active member of the team. Do you like reaping the benefits of cooperation? Join the advance, go get us today. Hold us together. This doesn't sound like the yacht club he told you about. Charlie grabs the flyer from you and trusts a form into your camp. So I can walk there straight from school and my sister can drop us home after. We won't have to do anything. Okay. Your son is thrilled. It is heartwarming to see him so passionate about becoming an active part of the community. This can only be a good thing. A free ticket. Some guys at work gave them to me. They can't go. 
Sam Strands in front of you, bandaging two tickets. You see the title in bold letters. Alan James in right in front of you. Really unsure. What do you think? Shall we go? The show is entertaining, but much less funny than you thought. He's a powerful public speaker, and something about it, uh, it sticks in your mind. Lying in the bed that night, wide awake, long after Sam's breathing turns heavy, hits you. It was the crowd, not laughing, but roaring. They profitable partnership. After a particularly long day at work, you come home to find the post sorted into pies. Sam has taken to doing recently. Most of it is a uh, usual rubbish, but a letter with a increasingly familiar advanced logo and urgent respond immediately. Clustered on the front in a correspondingly urgent trend, front grabs your attention. Has to get it over. Dear Winston residents, this letter is to inform you that the advanced government has taken another step forwards in our fight for equality by nationalizing the largest private corporation and redistributing their resources among the citizens of this great country. Partnership owns program ensures that wealth created by the people is delivered to the people. We don't remember this thing in the manifesto. Every household will become a partner in two of four carefully selected institutions, chosen by advance for consistent high performance and financial security. Please note, all returns are based on public opinion and cannot be guaranteed. Please select one of the following. And for your second one, please select one of the following. A of the beholder. Thank you for making your selection. Please return this form using the envelope provided. You will receive a report from your partnership in three to six works, working months. Months. Seems even advance can defeat the Wagner of governmental bureaucracy. The future of this nation is in partnership forwards together. The Tempest Day. 153. Good evening, Alex. It's Bozeman here, your boss. While you're powering up and getting the adverts loaded, I thought I should just tell you that we've had one of those public information films from the government, and it's mandatory that you play it. You still have a free choice for the other two, so read those tape labels carefully, but make sure you play the advance advert, preferably at the second break. Right, that's the lot. Have a great show. I don't get it. Okay. Good evening. Hi, I'm Jeremy Dolls. Our main story is tonight. Come on. Daddy, it's starting! It's all in the Bible. Look, Leviticus. What a wild ride this has been. 